Hello my little seedlings and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to do a video on my favorite um, things out of my entire witchcraft supply collection. So I have categories of tools and candles, books and cards, um, herbs and resins, and crystals and bottles. So. I just wanted to share these things with you because I do have a massive collection of books and crystals and, um, you know, tools and all kinds of things. I've been collecting, my collection is a good 10 or so years old. Um, some things are in my collection I've had for 20 plus years um, and some things I just got yesterday. So my collection is ever growing. And so these are the things that I use the most. These are the things that I reach for more than anything else in my collection. Um, back here you can see my cat, Jaxie. This is my favorite cat. Um, I do have four cats, um, about to be five, because I'm gonna get a black cat. Two of them stay outside most of the time, so. But this is Jaxie. She is my familiar. She is always by my side. Anyway. So let's start off with the tools that I love the most and that I reach for. So the candle sticks that I use the most, well first, the candles that I use the most are chime candles. These little small candles, um, and I usually use them, if, if it's just a simple spell, I will just use one candle. What you do is you carve out the bottom of one of these candles and you stuff it with herbs that are that hold the properties that you are needing for a certain intention. Um, so say you're doing a dream spell. You take lavender and you carve out the bottom, make a little hole. It doesn't have to be deep. Uh, I just use like a razor blade or a knife. A pocket knife is fine because these are really easy to carve. And you stuff it full of um, lavender. Boom, you got yourself a spell. Um, if it's something that I'm needing, if it, the spell is bigger, I go for this baby. Um, I found this at a thrift store. So my advice to you is if, just go to the thrift store all the time, as much as you can. Obviously, you can't go right now because of this whole thing. But once things open back up, go to the thrift store daily because that's how you find the good stuff. If you go all the time and figure out when they, the day that they restock. So um, usually around my area, it's on like a Thursday that they restock, that they put all the new products um, from the back into the front. That's how you find the good things. Um, I always use these little tiny um, spoons for scooping out my resins and um, my incense mixes. Uh, I usually do all my work on this silver tray. Again, this is a thrift store find. You usually can find silver trays in abundance at the thrift store. Um, the mortar and pestle that I reach for the most is this big guy. It is wooden and it is heavy, but it crushes things the best and it doesn't um, stick to the bottom. It, like, I, I've got some mortar and pestles that, um, like resin for instance, like these resins, if you crush them too much in a mortar and pestle, they begin to stick to the bottom. And some materials do that. This material, this wood, is always 100% clean. The cauldron that I reach for the most. I do have several cauldrons. I have a big giant cauldron. Actually, let me go get that. I've never showed that to you guys. Okay, so this is my big cauldron. I use this guy for specific holidays, um, such as, you know, all the holidays that um, are in the calendar. I use this for spells. This guy is really heavy. I found this at a flea market in Tennessee. Um, I think I paid $20 for this. That's a steal. This is cast iron. So 
I've got that big guy. I've got a lot of cauldrons, but the one I reach for the most is this one. Again, I found this at an antique store um, here in my local town. It was like kind of decorated in a primitive, if you guys know what I'm talking about, like the primitive style. That's what this was. Um, this is a cauldron stand. I found this on Amazon. You can still find it on Amazon for like $14. Um, it's got the tree of life on it. So I put my cauldron on that so it doesn't uh, burn any surfaces and you can place crystals around it as well. The, what I use for my charcoal briquette is I found this pack of a hundred charcoal briquettes for $10 on Amazon. Uh, it's called the Starlight uh, Charcoal. Starlight Charcoal, so that's what I use. Okay, let's go to books. The current um, spell books that I am reading right now um, are Nocturnal Witchcraft. Now, I've had this book for a long, long time. It is by, um, let's see, I can't, I can't pronounce the name, but it's right here. Uh, it's nocturnal, which as you can see, the it's I've had it for so long it's been worn off. But this is the one I'm um, really studying right now. Uh, this one, also, this one right here. All of these books, um, well, not not this one, but the this one and the next one is uh, I've got them off Amazon. Amazon is a great place for witchcraft supplies. I'm telling you. Just search in the search bar, witchcraft, Wicca supplies or witchcraft supplies. You will get tons of results. <clears throat> so I got this one. I am studying this one right now because obviously it's time to garden. Um, and then all, this one I've been studying for the last week or so. This is the Celtic lore and spellcraft of the dark goddess invoking the Morrigan. Um, I am a follower of Hecate, Hectate, Hecate, however you want to say it, the, the, um, the Maiden Mother Crone aspect. So, uh, that's one I'm really enjoying right now. As you can see, I've got a lot of bookmark places. This one is really cool because it tells you like the lore of the background of said spell and everything or... It's just really good. I really recommend that one. It's by Stephanie Woodfield. Okay, let's move on to supplies. Like, uh, let's, let's do plants and resins that I reach for the most. So the resin that I usually go for whenever I am lighting an incense is dragon's blood. I will mix dragon's blood with like anything. You guys, this lighting is terrible, but it's uh, 1130 at night. So all I got is the living room lamp. But dragon's blood resin, again, I got these off of Amazon, these resins. They came in a pack, I think of 10 resins or eight, I can't remember. It was a big amount of resin, um, big chunks, a lot of it for, I think it was like $20. It was a good price because resins can get expensive. So I use dragon's blood and copal. I use copal resin a lot because I like the way it smells. Um, and then an oil that I reach for all the time because it is a really good all purpose oil. And all it is, is dragon's blood resin mixed with sea salt and um what is that oil called what is it uh, some kind of oil so you mix it with a carrier oil so you want it to be it could be like sunflower oil it can be grapeseed oil it can be almond oil um it can be what is that res that oil called it starts with a c but it's the one i'm using right now hold on let me go get it that's what it was, it's castor oil. So you mix dragon's blood resin mixed with sea salt and castor oil. And that is how you make fiery wall of protection oil. This is a good oil to anoint yourself with if you're going into a conflict or if you're going into a place where you need 
spiritual protection if you're going into a crowded room or you know a place where you don't know a lot of people and you want to protect your energy this is really good for that so you put it on your neck you put it on your throat you put it on your wrist and you put it on your ankles um, and that will anoint you uh, the next resin that I use a lot is frankincense. Frankincense has a good healing ability. So like if you're feeling really sad or in a down mood and you just can't pull yourself out of it, light some frankincense. It doesn't matter how you, um, it can come in an incense stick or resin, but light it and inhale the smoke. Obviously not too much, just like <clears throat> kind of get a good whiff of it um, and it has the ability to lift your mood same with myrrh so I use myrrh as well frankincense and myrrh together it smells really nice and the herbs that I go for the most right now are roses um, I save every time I get roses for any type of occasion I save I hang them upside down of course, I let them in, sit them in a vase for like a week or so, and then I hang them upside down and dry them out, and then I keep them. These were from Valentine's Day, I believe. Um, so they are orange and yellow roses, and right now my rose bush is blooming beautifully, so there's a bunch of red roses outside. I just picked a few, so I've got red roses drying. Um, red roses can be used for rose water, rose oil, um, which is all you do is just simmer the rose petals in either water or oil and then um, sift the petals out. Or you can make lipstick if you just mix red rose petals or any type of rose petals with lemon juice and you take you start crushing it in a mortar and pestle until you get a paste. That you can make your own lipstick, you can make your own blush, you can make a lot of things with rose petals. Uh, you can make teas, you can make sachets, you can put them in basically any spell for a en love enhancement or, or projecting love. Very good thing to have. Uh, another thing I'm really obsessed with right now is cinnamon sticks. I love cinnamon sticks. So I made, I put together this little apothecary um, cabinet, as you can see. Uh, in the top, we've got just fell out it's okay it was just rose pet roses hold on let me let me pause this uh, and I'll show you this cabinet hold on okay so that was a big fail so in the drawer there is some rose petals and a few small rose buds um, and in the top there is some dried orange peels um, and some white roses and this is what it looks like again my friend Amazon, uh, the bottle does not come with it. I, I did this. I glued it on top and all that stuff. It's just like a little key in the bottle hanging in there. Um, but it's a Wiccan little chest. It's got some stars and the, and the moon, the triple goddess, which is like the Hecate, Hectate, however you say it. And then it's got this little thing here which inside I've got my mini mortar and pestle and some bottles some extra bottles in there so I've been loving this because it's really handy for my um, herbs that don't necessarily need to be in bottles such as orange peels rose petals and cinnamon okay now let's move on to, oh, wait, let me show you this real quick. I've also been um, enjoying putting feathers or elements of nature into um, my spell bags or my spell bottles. So I've been collecting feathers anytime I go for a walk. Um, and then my favorite, Stick incense right now is the sandalwood from this brand right here, the Stamford, Stamford brand. Um, I bought a case of like nine different kinds of incense 
for like, um, I think it was 10 bucks or something like that off Amazon. Just look up uh, incense, obviously, Stamford Incense Pack. They have all different types of bundles and different kinds, so you will be able to find one that you will like. And then now let's move on to the last part, which is crystals. Crystals are a beautiful thing. Now, everyone always asks me, how do you know what crystals to buy? Um, how do you know what you need? Like, what do you do to find the right crystals for you? Now, the answer to that is simple. Um, go into a crystal shop and just look around and and buy whatever calls to you. Whatever catches your eye is because you're matching yourself with the energy or, or with an opposite energy that will supply you with a thing that you need. So say you go into a shop and the first thing that you find so beautiful and you just can't walk away from is like a piece of selenite. That is because maybe you're holding a lot of negative energy inside of you and selenite has the ability to cancel out all negative energy. It has the ability to discard it and, and it does not hold negative energy so it can't get overloaded. Um, it transmutes negative energy into positive. So whatever you go in and your eye catches and whatever you just can't, see yourself leaving the store without is what you need. So take, go into a crystal shop, look around and buy whatever you think is the prettiest, whatever one that you just can't walk away from. And then go home and do your research on that. You'll be surprised at how much it correlates. Um, it's really fascinating. So on that note, Crystals that really, really call to me are the Labradorite crystal. Um, this crystal has always just held a special place in my heart. I got this one off of Amazon for, I think it was $12, maybe a little less, somewhere, somewhere around there. It was fairly cheap for what it is. Uh, it is a worry stone, it is a pocket stone. Um, as you can see, it is very beautiful. And then I got this one here. This is a Labradorite um, obelisk. It's a lot more dull. It's not as shiny as the palm stone, but it is still um, very beautiful. And the energies are very stable. And um, I really like this crystal. It is one of my absolute favorites. And my next favorite crystal that I just absolutely love, selenite. Selenite is a very soft stone. It can be broke very easily. Uh, it will disintegrate in water, so you don't want to let this get wet. Um, if you do get it wet, you want to dry it off immediately and make sure there's no water staying on it. My voice is starting to crack because this is a long ass video. Okay, and so those are the two crystals that I am really in love with right now. Um, and then the next thing let's talk is pendulums. These are my pendulums. This is a rose quartz pendulum that I bought off Amazon. This is a rose quartz pendulum that I made. I didn't make this part here. I bought that at Michael's, but I made this part here with a bead and a bell. And then this one I made with resin and mum flowers and some kyanite and some selenite. And it's got the tree of life. So those are the pendulums that I'm really liking. Another crystal that I really love is um, Smoky Quartz. Okay, and then these things are great. If you, um, there's a couple ways that you can you, like transmute negative energy into positive energy into a, in a room. You can use salt water. So get a jar of salt and water 
and like a mason jar and cover it, put it in a room that you spend the most time in and the negative energy will be absorbed by the salt. Now you can do that or you can get these. These are called organites. They are different stacked crystals with um, copper as a conduit and quartz crystal as a conductor. So it is basically a little device to transmute and transfigure, uh, not transfigure, transmute and change all negative energy in a room into positive energy. So you can use these, they're decorative pieces, they're beautiful, but they're also useful. I've got that one and then I got this one. This one is a lapis lazuli crystal um, with a copper spiral and it's got copper flakes all through it. Um, this one's really beautiful. Again, Amazon, you guys. Now, the last thing that I love to do as a witch, it is very simple. Uh, you can use any um, ingredients that you have. It can be very personal. It can be customized to yourself. You do not have to follow a recipe. You don't have to have specific magical ingredients. You can literally use um, herbs from your kitchen. You can go outside and gather herbs from your garden, whatever they may be. There's something magical out there. There's always some something magical outside for you to forage for spells. So the best thing and the most effective things that I have found uh, and the most satisfying thing if you're like a crafty person um, is witch bottles. You can make witch bottles so for so many different intents and purposes. Um, this one here I made for clarity, clarity of mind. So it's got different herbs that represent different things. It's got different crystals um, and uh, some incense at the top. This one I made as a money spell um, for abundance. So it's got different herbs that have um, a connection to money. It's got little miniature coins in there that I found from uh, Michael's. Uh, and then it's got green wax on top. <clears throat> it's got cinnamon in there and nutmeg. Um, this one here is a home protection spell. Uh, I made this one a while ago. It's got different herbs and spices and as you can see, piece of wire for a conductor, a conduit to help raise the vibration. It's got sea salt in it and crystals. And even this one, this one right here, it's just got some flowers and some sandalwood in it. So this can be put in a windowsill and a car. And I even have them as jewelry. This one, is for transmuting um, negative energy into positive energy because lately I've been feeling really negative. So I've been wearing this uh, and the point of wearing jewelry actually is to wear certain types of crystals on certain points on your body. So um, that way they can, you know, transmute the, the energy. So Spell bottles really have no rhyme or reason. You can do whatever you want with them and you can use whatever size bottle you have. Like literally, you can take an old vanilla bottle, vanilla extract bottle and use it. You can take an old salsa jar and use that. You can literally use anything you want. It's all up to you. It's just how, what your intention is, is how the spell outcome of the spell will have that's the outcome i'm trying i'm so mixed up right now so your intention is what will uh, make the spell work rather than your tools and ingredients so always remember that magic is about intention um, i hope you guys enjoyed this little look into my magical 
favorites and I will be doing this monthly so I hope you guys enjoy it. I love you guys. Good night.